Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. As Mr. Ibsen says, we are all ghosts. In us are all sorts of dead ideas, all kinds of old dead beliefs. We can never be rid of them. Whenever I read a newspaper, I fancy I see ghosts between the lines. There must be ghosts all over the world, countless as the grains of sand. And we are so miserably afraid of them. All of us. My host is haunted. Uh, haunted? Mrs. Soames? That's impossible. Why is it impossible? Uh, because, Mrs. Soames, this happens to be the enlightened 19th century. Nevertheless, my house is haunted. Mrs. Soames, there is no such thing as a ghost. Indeed, Mr. Smallwood? And what would you call that? Uh, um, a ghost. mystery drama, Indian Giver, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and x -Lax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. we long for those supposedly uncomplicated times we call the good old days. But what were the good old days? As Mr. Einstein said, everything is relative. Why, even back in the good old days, there were still those people who would yearn and sigh for, guess what? Right. The good old days. And just think, some 30 or 40 years from now, these will have been the good old days. Can you imagine? Well, let's go back to what many people are convinced were the good old days, just around the turn of the century. Madam! Oh, jitters. I was about to send for you. I, uh, yes, madam. Is dinner late? My guests are simply famished. Uh, concerning dinner, madam, it seems that other arrangements will have to be made. Other arrangements? Uh, yes, madam. Well, such as? We shall have to send round to Delmonico's or Rex's for food, madam. But I had thought dinner was being prepared by our own staff in our own kitchen. It was. Jesus, suppose you tell me exactly what is going on here. Uh, the, the staff was busily engaged in the dinner activity, madam, and suddenly all of them decided to leave. Quit? In the midst of... Not quit, madam. Leave. Uh -huh. I fail to perceive the distinction. It, it seems they were frightened. Frightened? Uh, yes, madam. By what? By a ghost. A ghost? Yes. Jetta, you know perfectly well there's no such thing as a ghost. <laughs> yes, madam. Well, then how could anyone possibly... No, I mean... they, they, they heard it. Oh, it's ridiculous. And I heard it, too. You heard it? Yes, madam. We all heard it below stairs. The staff bolted. I came here directly to make a report. Oh, that was the proper thing. You say you heard a ghost? Can you describe what he said? Well, that will not be necessary, madam. Listen, you may hear him for yourself. Oh, my... Oh, 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 uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my friends, please. Uh, now, there's nothing to it. Oh, Mr. Vanderbilt, this is Asta. M M Mr. Brick, please, I assure you. Uh, Mr. Carnegie, it is not... Yes? What is it, Miss Dowdy? There's a lady to see you. A lady? Yes, sir. Uh, who is she? Oh, sir, she's one of them great swells. Uh, now, Miss Dowdy, how many times have I told oh, you not to... Oh, she's wearing diamonds and jewels. She's like a, a beautiful queen. Uh, what is her name, Miss Dowdy? Her... her name? Yes, hang it all, her name. Oh, Mr. Smallwood, when, when you shout at me, I... Dash, blame it, Miss Dowdy. She must have a name. Oh, yes, sir, but when you shout, I, I just... Forget everything, my mind. Thunderation, Miss now, Dowdy. Now, see here, Mr. Smallwood. I won't have you abusing that poor girl. Oh, why, it's... it's... I could hear you in the reception room. It's Mrs. Soames. Uh, Mrs. Victoria Soames. You've terrified this poor child. Uh, this is indeed an honor, Mrs. Soames. Taking advantage of her naivete and her innocence and the fact that she needs the job. I'm not taking advantage of her. She's taking advantage of me. Uh, she happens to be one of the handful of people in this confounded city who knows how to operate that 
newfangled typewriting machine. Still, Mr. Smallwood, common politeness would require... Uh, common politeness, you... Mrs. Soames, is not enough. One must have extraordinary politeness to deal with Miss Dowdy. Uh, now, my girl, back to your desk. Oh, y- y- yes, yes, sir. Well, Mr. Smallwood... I must say, you have not made a very good first impression. It is not my business, Mrs. Holmes, to make good impressions, but to create favorable results. Were it not for the fact that you are highly recommended by no less a personage than the police commissioner of New York City, Colonel Theodore Roosevelt himself, I should terminate our relationship at once. Uh, Madam, you cannot terminate what has not yet begun. I require the services of a private investigator... I requested my friend and distant cousin, Colonel Roosevelt, to recommend a gentleman of spotless character, unimpeachable reputation, and immaculate integrity. Oh. And uh, the commissioner? The commissioner suggested that I lower my signs. He advised me to settle for you. Oh, indeed. Uh, Colonel Roosevelt says that you are a veritable Sherlock Holmes. Now then, I am Mrs. Victoria Soames. Wealthy widow of the late... Gustavus Adolphus Soames. Everyone knows that. And you are here to consult me because of a disturbance in your house. I would say it's of, uh, oh, supernatural origin. Who told you? Mm -hmm. You told me. I? I've said not one word concerning the motive for my visit. On the contrary, Mrs. Soames, you have been most eloquent. Besides, the thing is simplicity itself. Is it? We begin with the fact... That you are colorblind. Well, who told you? You told me. You are wearing a yellow blouse with a maroon skirt. Oh, am I? In the ordinary way, you would not have committed such a gaffe because you were always carefully dressed by your personal maid. Isn't that so? You are the detective. But this morning she was not present. And neither was your coachman. And who told you that? Uh, You told me. On the bottom of your skirt there are some stains of mud. Had your coachman been on duty, he would have brought your carriage around to the entrance of your mansion. But this time, you were obliged to walk down the street, which was still wet with last evening's rain, to seek a cab. Your cook has also deserted you. Who told you? (laughs) You told me. Your jacket. On the right cuff is the tiniest reddish-black stain. It could only be caused by one of those splendid new berries recently created by the celebrated Dr. Boysen. They are served only at Sour Wines, which is where you had breakfast this morning. Well, I must say Sherlock Holmes could not have done better. Uh, Sherlock Holmes could not have done as well. And so, obviously, there is a domestic crisis. Or, more accurately, a crisis among the domestics at the Soames Mansion. Isn't that so? Pray continue, Mr. Smallwood. Most, if not all of them, have left you. And why... Surely it is not because of wages or working conditions. A position in your household is a prized post. You are known as one of the most generous employers in the city. Therefore, what could cause your servants to leave the house and all at the same time? The obvious answer, they would not leave. They would have to be driven. But what could drive them away? Why, fear. And what sort of fear? Physical. Tangible fear? Unthinkable. Therefore, it must be a fear of the unknown. The unknown, the supernatural, <clears throat> ghosts. Am I correct? It is scarcely necessary for you to indulge in this parlor trick type of deduction. Uh-huh. I see that you are not impressed. Very well, madam. <clears throat> you have a ghost on the premises. That's ridiculous. Why? Because ghosts cannot and do not exist. The sound of a ghost was heard. Heard? By my servants, by myself, and by my guests. Your guests heard the ghost. That's fascinating. Is it? Yes. You see, the word guest and ghost share the same root, as does host. It all originates in the concept of the stranger. Uh, Yes, well, what do you intend to do with my ghost? What is there I can do? You have just informed me that ghosts do not exist. Someone or something is creating noise that people assume is being made by a ghost. And you heard this noise? Oh, yes. And what do you think it is? I have no idea. Uh, Had this noise 
ever been heard before? No. I see. Precisely what is it that you see, Mr. Smallwood? The noise is either rational or supernatural in origin. Is that a fact? What rational cause can there be for the noise? Rational? Uh, a faulty draft in a fireplace. Loose shingles on the roof. No, the house is kept in perfect repair. Uh-huh. Then someone may have created the noise intentionally. For what purpose? Mrs. Soames, you are the acknowledged leader of society in our city. I'm sure you have rivals. Pretenders would be a more accurate term. There are those who would contest your place. Usurp my place, if you please. Of course. And according to the society pages of the press... One of these is Mrs. Sterling Van Poundsforth. Oh, no one takes her seriously. <laughs> Not her, perhaps, but her money. Well, oh, she's the very essence of nouveau riche vulgarity. Concerning Mrs. Van Poundsforth... Must we discuss that impossible woman? Uh, haven't I read somewhere her statement to the effect that she intended to become the number one hostess in the city of New York? <laughs> the woman has absolutely no breeding. And that is why I will not allow her in my house. Can she be the cause of the disturbance? For what reason? For the obvious reason. To drive people away from your home. But how could she do it? Uh-huh. The how is what we must determine. That is what I shall pay you to do. Of course, the woman may be innocent. Impossible. Bring me the facts and the proof as soon as you can. I shall have to visit the house... And hear the alleged ghost for myself. Oh. oh. Very well. If you must waste time. Good afternoon, madam. Uh, Jitters, uh, this is Mr. Smallwood, a private investigator. Oh, uh, yes, madam. Have any of the staff returned yet? No, madam. Well, then, we shall have to see about hiring others. Yes, madam. Has the, um, the, the thing, has it been heard again, Jitters? Yes, madam, constantly. And what, uh, does this thing sound like, Jitters? Uh, well, sir, if you will be kind enough to listen. Uh, where is it coming from? Well, it, it, it seems to be coming from everywhere. The stairwell, downstairs. I would say from the dining room fireplace, sir. Huh? All right, Jitters. You go in there. And I'll run downstairs. I shall go with you. Uh, uh, no, Mrs. Holmes. It may be dangerous. Nonsense. It's probably that Poundsworth woman. She's probably sneaked into the house and... Oh, wait for me. There doesn't seem to be anything... Or anybody that might be held responsible for the uh, noise. Haven't you encountered any clues, Mr. Smallwood? I'm sorry, Mrs. Soames, but there doesn't seem to be anything of significance in the lower part of the house. I suggest we ask Jitters if he has been able to find something. Uh, Jitters? Jitters, uh, come in here, please. Jitters! Well, oh, that's strange. He always comes when he's called. Jitters! Wait, Mrs. Holmes. Do you hear that? Someone is groaning. It's coming from the next room. I must advise you to stand back, Mrs. Holmes. Oh, nonsense, Mr. Smallwood. Open the door. Why, it's Jesus. He's lying on the floor. Is he? Is he? Obviously, he's still alive. He's groaning. Jitters. Jitters, speak to me. What happened? <laughs> You can relax for a minute or two. You won't miss anything because Jitters is not going to speak to Mrs. Victoria Soames or to anyone else until I return with Act Two, at which time we may discover that a disembodied ghost may have some rather physical qualities. We're in the home of Mrs. Victoria Soames a leader of the social scene in the New York of just before the turn of the century. Mrs. Soames is having a problem with, of all things, a ghost. And it is wreaking havoc with her social life. The ghost hasn't done her butler jitters an awful lot of good either. 
Jitters. Jitters, speak to me. You'll be all right, Jitters. Jitters? Oh, madam. Oh, that's I... perfectly all right. Now, you know, you needn't try to stand. Me. With your permission, madam, sir, would you assist me? Uh, no, Jitters. Just lie still. If you would, sir, I'll be all right, I think. Ah, that's quite a bump you've got in your head. We will send you to the doctor. Yeah. <coughs> Jitters, uh, my... uh, what exactly happened? Well, I I was standing here by the fireplace, and I heard a noise. Uh, was it the same noise we all heard? Uh, yes, uh, but in addition to that, sir, another noise. Ah, can you describe it? It sounded like uh, footsteps. Footsteps? Yes, madam. And uh, where was that noise coming from? It seemed to be coming from behind me. Ah, and what did you do? Well, I, I turned round. Yes? And at that point, I was aware of a sharp blow on my forehead. Uh, uh, did you see anything? I, I was vaguely aware of a form. A form? Uh... What sort of a form? Well, it was just a kind of a thing, sir. There was this sudden shape, and then I felt a blow. Ah, was the blow administered by the shape? I would assume so, sir. Uh, then the blow had to be administered uh, somehow, um, uh, with a hand. Well, I, I, I couldn't say whether whatever it was had a hand. Uh, was there a blunt instrument of some kind? I couldn't say, sir. Ah. Uh, um, well, uh, very well, Jitters. That will be all. Uh, you may go. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, what have you discovered? Uh, we may not be dealing with a ghost. I could have told you that. On the other hand, we may. Uh, we shall have to follow both lines of investigation. Both lines, Mr. Smallwood? Yes. Uh, as I said before, the natural... And the supernatural. Ah, that dreadful Van Poundsforth woman is behind all this. What are you doing, Mr. Smallwood? Uh, obviously, I'm tapping on the wall. How is Mrs. Van Poundsforth behind all this? Why are you rapping on the wall? Uh, to see if there is some secret doorway Why, or passage. No, I, I never heard of any such to thing. To support the theory of a rational explanation, there must be some secret means of entrance and egress for whoever is making these ghost-like sounds. Don't you agree? Oh, well, this is your hypothesis, Mr. Smallwood. Mm. He could have only gone out the front door. The rear entrance is on the lower level, where we were. We, then, should have met him as we were coming up the stairs. Then he did go out the front door. Uh-huh. Did he? Come. Step this way. You see? See what? The front entrance. Jitters opened the door to let us in. Then he locked it again. You can see the chain is set. Now, the intruder had no way of letting himself out and then locking the door from the inside. Oh, well, this is rather like one of those puzzles, isn't it? Uh, so, if we do not find a secret passage of some sort inside this room, then... Yes, then then we must reluctantly conclude that the disturbance is of a supernatural origin. Oh, but I can't have that. <laughs> I'm sorry. But no one will ever come here. Hold on. What is it? This panel in the wall. It seems to... Uh, it, it's moving. It's part of a door. A small door. Well, we found it. Ah, let me shine my pocket torch inside. Why, it, it, it's a room... A small room. Yes. But it doesn't seem to lead anywhere. Unless there's a secret entrance from here into another passage. Why would anyone just want a small room behind the wall? As a hiding place, perhaps. A hiding place for what? Mrs. Soames, uh, who built this mansion? My late husband's family, uh, back in colonial times. Uh, please, forgive me for asking, but could they have been engaged in smuggling. Smuggling and worse, I shouldn't be surprised. Ah, uh -huh, then this could be the story of the secret room. Mr. Smallwood, something that should be obvious, even to you. I am the victim of a plot on the part of that notorious Van Poundsforth woman. But how is she doing it? 
she had hired someone to steal in and out and then and, and, and make that horrendous noise. Ah, but there is no way for that person to get in and out. Are you telling me that we did not hear the voice? No, Mrs. Holmes. Are you telling me that Jitters was not assaulted? No, Mrs. Holmes. Well, are you asking me to believe in ghosts? There must be a way of getting in and out without being noticed. With your permission, Mrs. Holmes, I shall search the entire house. <laughs> Well, Mr. Smallwood, have you any results for me? Mrs. Holmes, I have not yet crystallized my observations. Which means you have discovered absolutely nothing. I am forming a um, hypothesis, madam, which requires a bit more time to mature. The culprit can only be Mrs. Van Townsforth, and the sooner you face her with the proof of it, the better. At this point, I have no absolute proof. Confront her anyhow. I'm sure she has such a guilty conscience she'd break down immediately. Ah, Mr. Smallwood. I was expecting you. Indeed, Mrs. Van Townsforth. Oh, let's do away with indeed. There are no reporters around. And this society palaver is enough to break my jaw. Uh, in, in, oh, indeed. see? You were going to say indeed again. Let's just relax, huh? <clears throat> uh, why were you expecting me? You know, behind your fancy suit and that highfalutin conversation, I can see Jersey City. Uh, I don't see how that is germane to the... Well, I'm from Newark myself, but I don't try to hide it. That's what's killing this Victoria high horse, Soames. Uh, You still haven't answered my question. Oh, why was I expecting you? (laughs) Elementary, my dear Watson, as it says in the books. She sent you here. Uh Uh-huh. What makes you think she would do that? Oh, climb off it. It's a plot, don't you see? Now, I'm trying to give her place the reputation of a haunted house so it'll keep the other swells away. That's what she told you, right? Well, are you? Oh, what's in it for me? The leadership of the 600? Uh, the leadership of the 400. The 600 were the light brigade who rode into the Valley of Death. Same thing. I'm the leader anyhow. Uh, not quite. Now, my husband... Sterling Van Poundsforth has more money than everyone else in New York put together. Now, that fact may not be known. He doesn't get into the papers like some of those Morgans and Fricks and that crowd. Uh, But that's the crowd you're trying to dominate, isn't it? That's the crowd that acknowledges the leadership of Victoria Soames. And since she won't have you in her home, the rest of them won't have you in theirs. Oh, they can't keep me out. The next time there's a panic on Wall Street... They'll need Sterling's money to help stop it. But meanwhile, you are being systematically excluded. Oh, well. That means my revenge will be all that sweeter. Ah. (laughs) You use the word revenge. Well, sure. And you claim you are doing nothing to hasten the arrival of that day. What could I be doing? You could be hiring someone to impersonate a ghost. Oh, I don't have to hire anybody. The ghost is already in the house. Uh... What ghost? Why don't you ask her? (laughs) Oh, do you mean she hasn't told you? Hey, do you mean she's actually withholding valuable information? Uh, What ghost? Why don't you ask me whose ghost? Very well, I'm asking. And I have to answer. It's not my place to tell you. Um, How do I know you're telling me the truth? Oh, just go back there and ask her. Say... Why didn't you tell me that your husband threatened you he'd come back to haunt you? Go ahead. Ask her. Why? Uh, Yes, Mrs. Soames. Why didn't you tell me? Because I didn't believe it was anyone's affair but mine. Obviously, other people knew about it. Uh, Tell me about your husband, Mrs. Soames. Oh, very well. Gustavus was a very shy and retiring person... He could trace his family back to Governor Peter Minuit's time when this was the Dutch settlement of New Amsterdam. Uh-huh. Yes, Mrs. Holmes? As a matter of fact, it was said that this house... Well, not this house exactly, but the original log cabin from which this house was expanded and rebuilt was constructed on the most historic site in the history of New York. Do you know what that was? 
suppose you tell me. On this very ground, the most famous financial transaction in history took place. Representatives of the Dutch West India Company, one of whom was my husband's ancestor, uh, purchased the island of Manhattan from the Indians for 60 guilders, or uh, $24. Uh, history has yet to determine who received the best of that bargain. Uh, Gustavus felt that he belonged to the oldest aristocracy in New York. His family, through the years, looked down on the new money. They considered anyone who could not trace his New York ancestry back for at least two centuries uh, was an arriviste, a uh, parvenu. I see. Uh, but the... I am coming to the point of the story. He knew my fondness for society, and he said to me, Victoria, I did not permit those vulgar steel and railroad and stock market millionaires in my home while I was alive, and you shall not have them here after I am dead. I see. To which he added, if you open the doors to those get-rich-quick parvenues, I shall... I shall come back to haunt you. Uh-huh. But Mrs. Soames, that explains the ghost. Does it? He threatened to come back to haunt you. And now, <laughs> evidently, he has. That isn't true. It isn't. Well, if I wanted to believe that, I wouldn't have hired you. Uh, but we not only heard the ghost, we even know who he is. A ghost cannot be a he. Uh, very well. Uh, it. A ghost cannot be a he or a she or an it. A ghost is nothing. A ghost does not exist. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you were saying, Mrs. Soames. We're listening to this ourselves. Where is it coming from? If it's truly a ghost, it can be coming from anywhere. But if it isn't a ghost, then we have problems, don't we? Actually, a non-ghost in this situation would be even more mysterious than a real ghost. Fortunately, there is still a third act which should clear up most of the puzzle when I return. True love is like ghosts, said the poet, which everyone talks about and very few have seen. Well... We have seen some instances of true love, and while we haven't actually seen any ghosts, at least on this show, we have heard some. As a matter of fact, at this very moment in her mansion in New York City some 80 years ago, Mrs. Victoria Soames and private investigator Spencer Smallwood are listening to what can only be a ghost. See if you don't agree. Yes. Yes, you're right. Oh, please, Mrs. Soames, uh, uh, be quiet. But it's him. You mean he? It's Gustavus, my late husband, Gustavus Adolphus Soames. Oh, you were right. It is a ghost. There are ghosts. And this is the ghost of my late husband. Why do you say that? Why? Does it sound like his voice? Well, I, I, I think so. Uh, but you're not sure? Well, I... What exactly is he saying? I can't seem to make out the words. But... If you listen closely, there's only one word. Well, I, I can't seem to... Keep listening. Do you hear it? No. Just one word, spoken in a variety of rhythms. It's... Hey, yo. Right? Well, yes. Well, yes, I think so. Well, have you ever heard your husband say it? No. You're sure? Oh, I'm positive. Then it can't be your husband. It stopped. Yes. Why do you say it isn't my husband? Uh, Jitters? Uh, please, come in here for a moment. Yes, sir? You called, sir? Jitters, you heard it. Yes, sir. And, uh, where were you, Jitters? In the pantry, preparing lunch. But, Jitters, uh... Didn't you want to investigate? Oh, no, the fact... sir, no. If you'll pardon my saying so, I had decided discretion is the better part of valor in this affair. The last time I attempted... Oh, of course, to... Jitters. And we can still see that ugly bump on your head. Uh, very well, Jitters. That will be all. Oh, thank you, sir. Mr. Smallwood, I am at a loss to understand you. 
First, you proved to me that there was such a thing as a ghost over my most vehement objections. And second, you insist that the ghost was that of my late husband. And now that I believe you, it seems you've changed your mind. Uh, one must be flexible at all times. Well, if it is not the ghost of my late husband, whose ghost is it? Uh, as to that, I still have not... I know. You still have not completed your hypothesis. You still have not crystallized your thinking. Uh, admittedly. But I am well on my way. Well on your way where? My dear Mrs. Soames, uh, who knows where any of us is truly headed? Uh, Miss Dowdy, if that's Mrs. Soames, tell her I'm not in. Oh, yes, sir. Hello? Uh, this is Mrs. Soames. Is Mr. Smallwood there? Well, he says to tell you he isn't in, Mrs. Soames. Oh, for goodness sakes, Miss Dowdy, give me that telephone. Oh. Uh, ah, Mrs. Soames. Mr. Smallwood, I have some news for you. Mrs. Van Poundfoot, that execrable woman, is boasting that she has already hired most of my servants. Oh? And she quotes them as saying that the atmosphere in the Soames mansion is, is too terrifying. Can you imagine? Well, uh... Now, Mr. Smallwood, you must do something. Do you realize that no one comes to see me anymore? Uh, no, but and I... even if they did, how could I serve dinner? Um, uh, it's a problem. But I engaged you to solve that problem. Uh, and I shall. When? Um, soon. Soon? Um, I, uh, I'm, uh, working on a lead right now. Tell me about it. Uh, I shall... Um, as soon as I crystallize my thinking. Goodbye, Mr. Smallwood. Uh, Miss Dowdy. Oh, oh, please, sir, don't lose your temper with me again. I've already lost it. You'd better take the rest of the afternoon off, or I shall not be responsible. Oh, please, sir, I I'd rather take tomorrow afternoon off. Uh, but, Miss Dowdy, I'm angry with you this afternoon. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Smallwood. You'll be angry with me tomorrow afternoon, too. And I must have tomorrow afternoon off. Uh, must you indeed. Oh, yes, sir. My... Intended is taking me to see the Wild West show. Uh, you have an intended? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, you will marry and produce little dowdies just like yourself? Oh, sir, we did want to see the Wild West show. It's Buffalo Bill. Uh, very, very, very well, Miss Dowdy. You may have tomorrow afternoon off, too. Oh, oh sir, it's a fantastic show. Uh, please, Miss Dowdy. My favorite's always been the Indians. Uh, spare me the agonizing details. Oh, it's so exciting. The way they come in on horseback and they're shouting their war chant. Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Hey, yo! Miss Dowdy, why don't you leave me now before I. Uh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. What did you say? I, I didn't say anything. That word. W which word? The one that the Indians use. That word. Hey, yo. Oh, they say it all the time. No matter what they're doing, it's. Hey, yo, this, and hey, yo, that, and hey, yo, all day long. Uh, are you sure? Oh, please, sir, don't yell at me again. That word, are you sure? Oh, yes, sir, I'm sure. That is, I, I think so. Mr. Smallwood, this is a surprise. Uh, you have news for me, I hope. Uh, Mrs. Soames, may I present Chief Old Bonnet of the Oglala Sioux? Oh, a uh, heap charmed, the chief. The pleasure is mine, Mrs. Soames. Oh, uh, uh, Chief Old Bonnet has a doctorate in philosophy from Oxford University. Oh, of course. Uh, the chief has been kind enough to come here to listen to our most interesting phenomenon. Interesting? Well, of interest to an Indian. And why would it be of interest to an Indian? Uh, because, Mrs. Soames, of that word. Oh, which word? the ghost. Yes. But Mr. Smallwood... Uh, please, Mrs. Soames. But you must do something. But we are. What are you doing? We are listening. To what? To the ghost. What for? He stopped. May, uh, maybe he'll go away? No, I do not think so, Mrs. Soames. What are you saying? It's remarkable. What is remarkable, Chief? The story he tells us. The story? What story? I didn't hear any story. Oh, yes, yes. It was clearly told. He's an Indian. 
An Indian? A long dead Indian. <gasps> oh, no. An Algonquin Indian from one of the tribes that lived on this very island. His name was Little Head. Little Head? Yes. You see, he was the chief of the Manhattan tribe. And he was the one who made the deal for Manhattan Island. Right here, where this house stands now. But what does this have to do with Everything, you? I'm afraid. You see, it soon became obvious to the Indian people that Chief Littlehead made, well, uh, it was hardly a bargain. Oh, but I fail to see the significance of that. And he tells me he has been condemned to spend all his time, even until eternity, to try to get the island back. Yes, brother, I comprehend. Tell them the diamonds were only glass that soon broke. And the hatchets couldn't chop. And the knives couldn't cut. And even the mirrors showed a false reflection. Yes, it was too bad. And the bright cloth faded in the sun. You mean he has told you all this? Of course. But how? He's only been saying one word. Hey, yo. True. It may be only one word, but it speaks volumes. It all depends on how it is said. You say, hey, yo. You say, hey, yo. You say, hey, 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 yo. You say, hey, yo, yo, yo. You say, yo, 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 yo. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, yo, hey. It conveys a veritable treasure trove of meaning. Yes, Mrs. Holmes. And therefore, we have discovered that this poor chieftain wanders through this place as a ghost, vainly trying to change the course of history, mourning for what has happened and for what might have been. And this is what you have discovered? Yes. This is what Chief Old Bonnet has discovered. And I find it reasonable. Don't you? Oh, it's unfair. I, I, I'm dreadfully sorry. It, it... It was a cruel trick to play on Chief Littlehead and all the Indians. But how can it be made right? You would have to give them back the island. Oh, then once again they would be getting the worst of the bargain. At least you can now account for the ghostly noise. But that does me no good. It won't help me get people to come here to my house. No. No, I cannot accept this answer to the problem. You cannot, Mrs. Hill. No, I cannot. Then I must give you the alternate solution, which happens to be the rational and practical one. You mean there is another solution to this problem? Of course. We need it for those people who do not believe in ghosts. Jitters, uh, come in here for a moment, please. Well, what is it? You called, sir? Uh, Jitters, at first I was of the opinion that the noises were being made by a ghost. But I see now that someone else is responsible do you happen to know who? I know, sir. Uh-huh. You should, Jitters. Why should I? Because, Jitters, it's you. Me, sir? Jitters. Mrs. Van Poundsforth paid you to spread a reign of terror among the servants. Did she not? But, Mr. Smallwood, aren't you forgetting a small detail? Jitters was actually struck down by this, uh, well, by this ghost. Uh -huh. Was he? Well, you could see the bump on his forehead. Uh -huh. Can you indeed? I searched the premises in general. And your room, Jitters, in particular, I found this bit of flesh-colored putty. Is that what you have on your forehead? Jitters. Well, shall you remove it, Jitters? Or shall I do it for you? Ah. Uh. Thank you. You see, Mrs. Soames, Jitters only pretended to be struck down. Oh, Jitters, how could you? Well, I... I was merely following my late master's instructions. His instructions? Yes, madam. I was present when he said to you, Victoria, if you entertain all these people I didn't like while I was alive, after I'm dead... I'll come back to haunt you. Did you, you recall that statement, madam? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, well, then after you had left the room to call the doctor, he motioned to me to come closer. And he said, Jitters, 
see that I come back to haunt my wife if she pulls any of that stuff. Promise? He made me promise. Oh, my poor Jettas, you were only being loyal. Yes, madam. And I must keep that promise. Then what am I to do? There are two solutions, madam. Two solutions, you say? Uh, One, you could fire me. Oh, I I wouldn't care to do that. Or two, uh, Mr. Soames said he wanted me to help him haunt his wife. But uh, if you were to marry Mr. Smallwood here, you would no longer be Mr. Soames' wife and his wishes would no longer be binding. What a smashing (laughs) idea, Jitters. How could I ever survive without you? Marry Mr. Smallwood. Now, uh, what do you think of that, Mr. Smallwood? Uh, Well, Mrs. Soames, um, I have not yet had a chance to... uh, uh, I know. To crystallize your thinking. Uh, What do you think, Chief Old Bonnet? (laughs) Well, there you are, Victoria, my darling. It has just become... Crystal clear. Well, if you've been paying attention to the oldest rule of all in the science of the mystery story, you'd have arrived at the ending at the very beginning. And what is that rule? Why, the butler did it. Well, we have some other deeds to announce shortly. I guess I'm lucky. My family's always been healthy. Oh, a touch of constipation now and then. But we've got x lax for that. Today, more American families trust x lax than any other brand. When you need a laxative, you can count on x lax for relief in the morning. For occasional use only as directed. Why x lax My family trusts it. That's why. Now, you can relieve the misery of itching fast. Bicozine Cream has the fastest anti-itch drug you can buy without a doctor's prescription. Use only as directed. Get Bicozine. try to offer something for everyone. If you're practical, it was Jitters the butler. If you're supernaturally oriented, it was the ghost of an Indian chief. Maybe it was both. Or maybe it was the ghost of the late Gustavus Adolphus Soames. Maybe it was all three. After all, this is the place where we deal in endless possibilities seven times each week. Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Mary Jane Higby, Robert Dryden, and Bryna Rayburn. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.